can see uh, popping up uh, within the audience, even yeah. if I can only just see you to, to, to wave at. We, we should move on to our second uh, uh, research conversation uh, Thank you. for today, um, meaning that we are going uh, far east, um, uh, all the way to China, uh, where Dr. Ewan MacDonald, uh, who's a postdoctoral researcher in the China Centre, will be in conversation with Professor Marilyn Booth, the Khalid bin Abdullah Al Saud Professor for the Study of Contemporary Arab World, bringing the, I suppose, the West and East of the areas we study um, together. Um, Marilyn, over to you. Okay, thank you, Martin, um, and hello, everybody. It's a great pleasure to be in conversation with these another one of these wonderful research um, conversations. Pleasure to be in in a conversation with you and McDonald about a project which is certainly very far from my own work, but interestingly does um, you know there I I did find in, in thinking about this some shared concerns um, that I may want to raise. So Ewan um, comes to us from SOAS. He wrote his dissertation on vernacular Chinese fiction, but the current project, um, which is funded by the European Research Council under the Horizon 2020 program, focuses on Chinese court theater. It's called Text Court, linking the textual worlds of Chinese court theater um, 1600 to 1800. So Ewan, I wondered if we could start, if you could just talk a bit about the project, whatever you want to say about it, um, and about the archive for this work. Um, what is it? Where is it? What kind of texts are these materially and in other ways? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so yeah, like you say, Text Court is, um, is a project focusing on Chinese court theatre um, and it um, was kind of conceived and led by uh, Professor Tan Chien, who's I think in the meeting here. Um, but the kind of reasoning behind um, choosing court the Chinese court theatre as a subject to focus on is that court theatre has really been a core part of um, both Chinese court culture and also Chinese performance culture for, for a really long time. I mean, with the um, as early as the Tang Dynasty, so in, in 6806, uh, there was already um, a kind of uh, an, an administration, um, the Office of Music Instruction, um, which was dedicated to producing songs and drama for court performances. Um, and in the last two imperial dynasties, the Ming and the Qing, so that's uh, 1368 to 1911, for those of you not kind of familiar with um, the Chinese history then, um, court theatre began to flourish and got even more um, got even more um, elaborate and extravagant. Um, so that's why we're um, in, our, in our project focusing on the court theatre of the Ming and Qing dynasties. So the dramatic performances in the court really um, punctuated, punctuated the passing of the year within the, within the court. So um, every time there was an imperial birthday, a wedding, a state ritual or a seasonal festival, then there would be um, a performance of court drama to mark that occasion. Um, so it's really, um, really, really like a really central to court life. Um, uh, however, despite its significance um, in both understanding co Chinese court culture and Chinese performance culture, then it's not the, 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 the texts of them have, have never really been properly studied um, because they're kind of they've been looked down upon in um, Chinese literary history. Um, it might sound a bit strange to say that um, court theatre was kind of um, yeah, it was, it was kind of looked down upon in this way, but um, Chinese literary history, history tends to um, contrast it with what they call elite theatre, which was uh, written by the elite literati class, whereas this court theatre was really, um, um, because it's really designed for performance, it was, it was all written to be performed on stage, and so it, it doesn't contain all that much in the way of literary flourishes, um, and doesn't work as well when you read it as a read it as a text. Like the, the court plays, they really um, I think they really need the grand stage designs and the huge um, visual spectacles um, as a, as a sort of key part of their attraction. Um, so they've been like ignored in by researchers of Chinese researchers in Chinese literature. And until very recently, there was actually very little um, research on them at all. So that's the kind of um, as the kind of gap in the existing research that this project aims to aims to fill. Um, and we intend to do that by building a digital archive of Chinese court theatre scripts. Um, so um, these court theatre scripts are, most of them exist in manuscript form in various um, uh, private 
collections and um, and state collections in China. Um, and so what we are doing is digitizing them using OCR methods. Uh, for some of the um, court theatre scripts, there's actually uh, modern editions that we can use to get the OCR before we cross-check that against the manuscripts. For other scripts, there's, actually, there's no um, modern typeset editions, so we have to work directly from the manuscripts themselves. Um, so we are building, um, so we're digitizing the scripts at first, um, checking the um, optical character recognition and making sure everything's in there correctly. Uh, and then we're going to take a smaller sample of the um, the huge number of scripts, um, about 200 of them, and mark them up with TEI markup in XML and use that as a basis for further research to link these court drama scripts to the, um, the literary history that pr um, produced them to um, particular occasions and individuals involved in the in the in the dramas um, to the visual and material culture um, in, of the court and also to um, cross cultural flows because a lot of the court theatre scripts um, they describe um, they describe foreign countries coming to the Chinese court to offer tribute and they were also performed in the in the presence of foreign um, visiting foreign dignitaries as well so um, we we can um, we can actually compare um, foreigners' descriptions of these court, um, court dramas with the scripts themselves and, and see what, to see how they were perceived, perceived by foreign visitors. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the kind of the, the basics, basics of the project. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. I mean, I, when I first started thinking about, um, you know, performance texts, it seems incredible to me in a way um, that these were even preserved so well because so often it seems like, I mean, again, I'm not trying, I know it's a, it's a very different time and place, but I've done a little bit of work on um, drama in 19th century Egypt. And there, you know, what we have is we often have um, plays that are printed and published, um, but we're not sure they were ever actually performed. And the ones that were performed, we don't always have you know, the texts, the performance texts. So I wondered, um, so this just seems amazing. And you also obviously have texts that um, that help you then understand um, the reception of these plays. Um, as performance texts, what do they tell us? I mean, in other words, you've got presumably the, the actual the actual text of the performance, but are there a lot of clues within these texts as to how these things were performed, or do you have to always get that from observations of, of those who were observing them? Um, no, so the, the, obviously the, um, the, there's a huge number of texts um, to start off with, so there's, there's quite a lot of variation in, bet in between the texts, um, but there actually is um, quite a large amount of uh, performance information in a, in a lot of these texts. So. Um, one of the, um, I think, one of the more striking, um, one of the more striking examples is um, in one text. They um, they kind of instruct the cast members to make themselves into the shape of um, the Chinese, some Chinese characters, um, and so they actually have a in in the script. There is a, a diagram uh, which tells where it's like a kind of blocking diagram, so it tells where it tells all the actors in the cast where they should, where they need to stand. Who they, need, who they need to stand next to in order to make the shapes of these characters visible to the, to, to the audience. Um, there's also, um, I think, some, there's also descriptions of um, stage machinery. They had some, some quite um, elaborate stage machinery, machinery in the imperial stages. Uh, and also very, um, so some plays come with extremely detailed um, costume lists, so the, the, a list of cos costumes and props worn by each um, each character in each act. So yeah, there is a lot of uh, a lot of information about yeah. the staging of these plays um, available in the scripts. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. I mean, th it also I was wondering in terms of this whole context of performance and reception. Um, you mentioned. Um, occasions at which, you know, there might be a ritual occasion that something like this would be performed at. Um, what about other, were there, were there other reasons for these to be performed? And do they, for instance, do they seem to um, propagate a kind of state ideology or a court ideology, maybe is a better way to put it. And and from that, would we know anything about how broad the audience was for this? I mean, was it really within a fairly small court elite or 
would it have been something that would have been visible to um, larger groups within the society? Or is it impossible to say, maybe? <laughs> Um, so and yeah, so in terms of in terms of occasions, um, so there were also um, court dramas produced for the occasions of. Um, excuse me, I've got a, got a bit of an invasion here. Really, I'm just uh, I'm just on I'm just on the computer. Just to remind us of the kind of um, real life situation in which we're we're all working. Uh, Sorry about that. We just, got, right. uh, we just came home, so we uh, want to say hi. A nice, a nice dramatic moment, too. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was saying um, in terms of occasions, then, um, in, in particular, the uh, Qianlong Emperor in the Qing Dynasty, um, he made um, inspection, inspection tours of the south of China, so um, the Qing capital was in Beijing. Um, but the Qianlong Emperor actually, um, on several occasions, actually toured around, toured around to the south, and so there were um, there were particular court dramas written for the for the occasion of his tours to the south and performed um, in the kind of houses where he's in the sort of mansions where he stayed when he was on those tours. Mm -hmm. um, uh, sorry, I've, um, I, I lost my I lost the other question. Yeah, so, oh, the um, state ideology. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess um, I guess kind of a, a common a common theme is that they 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 they, they seem to be quite um, anxious to portray um, an image of a world in which everything is everything is well. Um, right. Like, so I mean, even looking even looking through the titles of the plays, then they they, they kind of you know um, they, they they kind of give they give this impression like they, they you know they, they, there's titles such like everything you know everything under heaven is 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 peace or like um, you know, they, we're, everything is peaceful and happy, and like there's, there's like auspiciousness is, is everywhere. But this sort of thing. So, the, so there is, um, uh, I guess that you know comes from comes from the sort of ritual significance of the place. But um, it's also um, it is interesting actually um, seeing how whoever wrote these plays tries to um, kind of square the circle of um, you know writing a play where you know every, no, no, essentially nothing too bad can happen because um, because you have to present this image of um, everything being fine, but then still having a little bit of dramatic tension um, at the same time. So um, that's that's something that's uh, that's quite interesting. Um, and so yeah, a lot of the um, a lot of the birthday plays that were performed on the imperial birthdays they have um, descriptions of. Um, Emissaries from various um, various countries coming to the Chinese court and giving tribute um, to the to the Chinese to the Chinese emperor. So that obviously um, helps to project um, project project an image of kind of Chinese state power and um, so this kind of the, the country is powerful enough to inspire all these um, these foreign countries to come and give tribute. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I mean, this it just opens up so many interesting questions, but I know we don't have a lot of time and I so I'm going to jump to something um, a little different um, that is part of your your project as well um, that I'm certainly very interested in. I know that your project aims ultimately also to produce translations of some of this material and I wondered if you could talk a little bit about that in terms of the scope of what you envision and also maybe what particular challenges um, does this material pose um, to translation and, and how how are you, you know, maybe are you already working on that or is that something that is a, a further um, step for later on? So yeah, the translation is something that we're starting to work on at the moment. So um, there's um, so yeah, the, the, the total number of uh, court drama scripts is um, in the tens of thousands. Um, we are going to put um, around 200 of these scripts in our core database. So that's the marked up with XML and, and all, the, all the TEI bells and whistles. And then we're probably going to translate, I would say, maybe a dozen of these. So like a, a, a fairly small sample of the of what there is out there. But like, um, yeah, just in, in terms of, you know, you know, balancing time and um, also, you know, space on the page and everything else that's probably probably about what we can do um, so in terms of in terms of approach there yeah, there are um, there are quite a few there are challenges um, 
I guess the, I think the main challenge in creating a translation that um, kind of uh, even remotely appears like it could be performed on stage is the, um, the sort of cultural background to the to the place. I mean, there there are, there, there are um, and in some of these places there are just there's simply so many kind of like gods and deities and all the rest of it, um, and like it's kind of I mean for, I mean for, for for like an English language reader reader then like it kind of makes your head swim after a bit because there's just there's all these all this kind of like cultural background that you know as um, coming from a different culture we just we just simply don't have um, and so that kind of yeah how to how to deal with that is, is quite a question because you know it soon becomes kind of quite quite a cumbrous cumbersome kind of cumbersome text where, where if you try and explain all this background through notes or, or things like that but if you don't then like it's it's it is literally just a long list of names so like that's a, I think that's a that's quite a difficult one another one is i suppose it's, it's less less of a challenge for translation but um it's kind of um is something interesting is just how they um because they're the, 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 the way they're written is sometimes um kind of um I mean, to to again to someone with a background in um, English language literature is, is kind of can, can be infuriating sometimes. I mean, there's there's one play in which they spend um, sort of two about about two pages. Um, so it's it's just literally someone going from one side of the stage to the other, saying, "Oh, so and so is here," and then uh, so someone comes on stage and the servant, servant says, "Oh, what's your name?" And he says, "I'm so and so," and then the servant runs to the other side of the stage and says, "Oh, by the way, so and so is here." And he's like, "Well, go, go and let him in there," and then he runs back to the other side of the stage and says, "You can come yeah. in there." So that sort of thing. So it takes it takes an inordinately long time um, just for um, kind of someone to come on stage, um, which is obviously like part of the style of the kind of part of the style of the um, of the performance. But um, it's, it's it's a question. It, I guess it's a question of how to how to express that in translation in a way that yeah. um, is in, in 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 a way that makes that doesn't immediately turn the English language reader off but gives some sort of flavor of like how it might how it might have appeared on stage and where where it kind of makes more that kind of thing makes more sense I guess so yeah there's there's like yeah I think challenges in in um in like the style the style and approach taken in the translation yeah, I mean, there's also always, I, I, again, this is something I always face in, in thinking about the 18th and 19th centuries is when you translate, do you try to approximate some kind of period style in English or do you use a very, mm -hmm. you know, a very contemporary? I mean, it, it's, you know, there are good reasons for both, but I wondered whether mm -hmm. those are also questions that you're you're facing at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, I think, with the with, with with these scripts, I think there's, there's actually quite um there's quite a variance in register of language within the play already. So I think we would try and kind of replicate that. Um, yeah. for, for those who don't know, Chinese drama is or, or a lot of Chinese drama is characterised by um, the the main thing are arias, which are, which is sung sung verse portions. So they um, kind of usually have a more um, a more literary, more more formal register than the dialogue, which in, which is right. expressive. And so, um, so yeah, even in, in the original scripts, there is quite a difference in like the formality of the language and um, between the dialogue and the arias. So I guess yeah. that and that might kind of yeah that might kind of feed into that whole question of um, the the style the, the style of the translation. That's really interesting. Yeah, we have more questions, but I want to uh, um, give an opportunity to people, um, others who are listening. So, Martin, I don't know if you have some questions lined up that you want to. Um... Well, I, I have, but I can start off with one from somebody else. So, um, Henrietta has a question. Myself. Did I appear? Or can you at least hear me? We, we, we can hear you. Oh, yeah. There you are. Oh, you can, and you might even be able to see me now. Yes, I better. Um, so, so I've been doing some work on the McCartney Embassy, and they obviously saw one of these dramas, um, and uh, it quite equally obviously didn't really work for them. Certainly didn't convince them of the um, the legitimacy of it. They, they found it quite exciting. There was water flood, there were really exciting water flood coming down, so the stage was all flooded and um, sea monsters and all sorts of tremendous drama. 
drama, um, but the message of it, you know, they wrote different people on the embassy thought it meant different things, so they clearly had some some issues. Yeah. Um, and so that I thought that might be. I, I wondered how much the project was going to go and look at travel accounts by the British, Koreans, Vietnamese um, and see what they made of these things. And then I have another question, so it's slightly unfair, but you, you, I mean, this was Professor Tan's project. He designed it. You were employed to work on it, presumably. I'd like to know what you think is the most interesting thing about the project. Mm -hmm. Great question. OK. Um, so yeah, it's sort of the the um, the kind of foreign foreign links is is kind of one of the kind of so so the, the project has kind of like four four links that it's it's trying to make with Chinese court drama. So that's um, kind of linking it back to the textual web of um, Chinese literature, um, drawing links to um, individuals and occasions, uh, linking it to material culture, and also linking it to cross cultural flows. And that's quite um you know that's quite a big part of the part of the project. So we've got partners in Vietnam um, and we will be, um, I, th I think we have a, we have an RA in Korea or will do very soon um, looking at Korean records um, and also one looking at other other records in other European languages about the, the, the kind of visiting foreigners who saw Chinese court drama. So yeah, that is quite a, it's quite a big, um, quite a big, big part of the project. And we are, um, in addition to um, in addition to including kind of play scripts in um, in our database, if you like, we we're, we're also collecting um, foreign records uh, in which Chinese court drama makes um, makes an appearance. Um, so in terms of in terms of what I find interesting, I think um, uh, what I find what, what I find interesting is actually um, I suppose also this kind of um, this cross cultural aspect. Um, it's really quite. Um, it is quite interesting to me how um, a kind of form of drama that is really associated with the, the sort of very closed world of the Imperial Palace is at the same time um, not only outward facing and that it's um, kind of performed to all these foreign foreign visitors and foreign dignitaries, but also even within it, it, it like it, it represents the world outside um, in quite quite an interesting way and quite quite a regular way. And so um, it's, it's some, sometimes it's almost Quite quite entertaining. Um, I think there's one um, there's one um, one play we, we we've been talking about quite recently where um, the the language some Japanese people appear in the play and they, they kind of talk Chinese in a slightly slightly funny way in a kind of like they, they, you can see they they represented the Japanese act like Japanese accents or a Japanese way of speaking in in the script. Um, and then there's another uh, another play from the Ming Dynasty where um, the um, um, it's another the, the, these this kind of Southeast Asian Southeast Asian peoples um, kind of come across uh, Junker, who's off to the South Seas to collect some tribute, and um, the way they describe them and sailing in their canoes. They obviously they don't have the word for canoe, so they, they, the the word they they, they just use um, they sail along in the hundreds of boats made out of only one plank of wood, um, kind of thing. So it's kind of yeah interesting to see how they how they just how the the outside world was seen and also how it was. Portrayed to the to the um, to the palace. Then, uh, can I can I ask? Are, are any of these scripts unperformable? And, um, is it part of your job to try to work out how you actually make them happen on the stage? Unperformable. Uh, do you mean by do you mean um, if if our project team was to try and um, put on a put on a staging? Um, are, are you going to try? Why not? Yeah, I can suggest it. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I guess most of them might most, most of them might be. Um, but it, yeah, it, it depends to, to what extent. I mean, like uh, for some of the ones which rely on some of the more um, sort of complicated staging machinery, then uh, without sort of reconstructing that staging machinery, it might kind of be quite hard to. Quite hard to do, um, but I guess I guess most of them you could perform in in, in some fashion. It might not be particularly sort of authentic or like or true to how they were, but um, I think I guess they have it's complete in the sense that you have dialogue, you have the areas, you have actions, you have props, and in some of them you have costumes. So you have all the basic ingredients necessary to to make um, some kind of performance out of it. 
I mean, it's, it's one of the arguments about uh, um, Latin tragedies, uh, Seneca's tragedies, um, is uh, <coughs> that <coughs> they must be literary efforts mm -hmm. um, because you can't work out how they're going to work on a stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's interesting because that's that kind of actually um, precisely precisely the reason why um, why they're kind of not viewed with not, not seen as being terribly important in Chinese literary histories because they are um, as texts they are more focused on performance rather than the more the more sort of admired texts in Chinese of Chinese drama are um, kind of precisely precisely as he said um, and people complained at the time that they were essentially unperformable because the the language was so complicated. And awkward to sing, um, but these are these are yeah they're very much tied to performance um, when they were when they were when they're composed. Got a, a question from Nadia. Mm -hmm. I I actually wrote it so that you could ask it for me, but I'll <laughs> if you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's better in your voice. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, do you, uh, thank you so much, and it's really fascinating. I, I wanted to ask you: Do you have any idea of the original music? That that was used for for the arias you 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 talk about. Uh, mm -hmm. is, this, is this something that's just pre-prepared? Is it improvised, or do you have records of this? Um, so the music would have been um, the, the the arias are written according to like a collection of uh, various um, tune patterns. Um, so I think most of these are unfortunately unfortunately the music for them is is lost. Um, I believe. Um, so yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, that's that's a shame. But so what we have a record of is the kind of musical mode and, and key they would they would have been in and the title of the tune. Um, and so then it there, would be there was kind of sorry. professional. It would be possible for a prof professional musician who 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 knows all the modes of Ch classical Chinese music to be able to to do something with this, even if you weren't totally sure it would mm. be authentic or. Well, I guess I, I guess the thing is they, they have the they have the key written down or the mode written down, but not the actual notes. Mm -hmm. um, so I, so yeah, I guess you could you could essentially recompose something mm -hmm. in the same mode. Um, mm -hmm. But um, I don't think there's there's not like yeah notation for notation for a lot of these tunes. And I think that, I think. That, it's um you know it's a whole, it's a whole like it's a whole area of study. I think there might be some there might be some surviving notations, but yeah. I mean, generally speaking, yeah, the, the 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 musical notes aren't preserved along with the play text. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I think I'd probably better do my duty since our uh, hour is um, always up. Um, it seems to me that in the middle of a pandemic, working on something which describes everything is happy and all is well as these uh, dramas do, it seems to be an exceptionally sensible way of spending your time and it sounds like a, a, a wonderful project that you're all involved in. So th thank you very much indeed to, to presenting, for presenting it to us uh, and for asking questions and indeed for everybody who's taken part in today's research conversations. Well, we shall continue having conversations uh, the next term. Um, and in the meantime, maybe next time we'll meet in person. So thank you very much to everybody uh, uh, for having taken part today. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.